In this video, I want to talk to you about a couple of concrete things you can do to get ready for your first year of medical school. It is inevitable. Anki, Anki, Anki. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to Mez on the Move, hi, hello, what's poppin'? My name is Melody and I am a native New Yorker and first, oh, not a first year, and a rising second year medical student here in New York City. In this video, I wanna talk to you about a couple of concrete things you can do to get ready for your first year of medical school. If you are looking for a list of sort of study tips or study techniques that you can use to study during your first year of medical school, then this is not the video for you. I don't wanna waste your time. That's not this one. My goals for this video are to share with you a couple of concrete things you can do in the days and weeks leading up to starting medical school to just make the transition to medical school a little bit smoother. If that's interesting to you, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we can just jump right into the video. My very first tip for preparing for medical school is to humble yourself. If you rolled your eyes at that tip, I think it's really important to go into medical school not thinking that you're like the hottest med student on the block, not thinking that you are somehow entitled to people's time, but instead to go in from a really humble place and ready to just learn. At the end of the day, people are taking time away from their patients in many ways, right? Away from patient care and their usual jobs to teach you to be a physician. And that is a critical part of training doctors, but it's one that we should never take for granted. You are going to be a first year medical student and this is just one small step on on this long journey to becoming a physician. So that's where I'm gonna start. Number two, there's a couple of things that I think you should write down. You don't have to take my advice. Grab a pen and paper, I'll wait. And I write down these things. I will make time for a blank while I'm still in medical school. You will have time to do it, but it's on you to make that time. I think it's helpful to bring whatever those things are to the front of your awareness. A second thing I think you should write down, although it's not as important as the first, is a list of specialties that you might be interested in. I don't think it's bad if you already know, like I'm really interested in XYZ specialty. If you have something in mind right now, I would also write that down. Bring it to the front of your mind, the front of your awareness, so that if an opportunity presents itself to either connect with a physician in that field or to learn more about that specialty, you will be able to do so. There's definitely some science about this. What we write down or speak about, we bring to the forefront of our consciousness. And then, anytime an opportunity presents itself, after you've been made more aware of this interest you have, you are more likely to actually see those opportunities. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't think there's any shame in thinking right now you want to be a dermatologist or you want to be an internist, right? And if those things are, are genuine interest to you and you think you might have an interest in that field, which many of us, you know, came to medical school interested in particular fields, I think that's totally fine and it doesn't hurt to be very aware of that interest. Last thing I want you to write down, and I think this is probably the most important thing of the three things, so I did it in some crazy order. I should have done it in order of priority. But the last thing I want you to write down is when I need help, I am going to or when I need help, I will blank. I think that's good. It is inevitable. It is inevitable. It is inevitable that over the next four years, there will come a time that you will need help. It may be a med school thing. It may be a non-med school thing. But at some point in the next four years, it is very, very likely that you will need help. And I want you right now, before the stress of med school begins or before you start taking part in this beautiful next step to becoming a physician, I want you to be clear on your support system. You can take this anywhere you want. If you wanna talk specifically like, when I need help with school, I'm going to blank, write that. If you wanna go, when I need help, when I need help in my personal life, I will blank, then do that. I think you're allowed to have a little bit of creative freedom here. I don't know who you are and I don't know what challenges you might be facing that are unique to you. I think it's really important that everyone who's about to participate in anything that's particularly time consuming, that they get super clear on their support system. And if you find yourself in a position where you don't feel like you have a support system, then maybe that can be something that you add to your to-do list. Everyone needs a little bit of help and I completely understand what it's like to come from a place where you might not feel like you have a ton of support built into your life as it is. I honestly really do understand that. So if you find yourself in that place, maybe it's important for you to seek out, you know, wellness services early. Maybe that's something you want to do now because I truly believe that your support system is what carries you through med school. And I'm only a second year med student, but trust me, I know. Take my advice. I wrote down some notes and I want to make sure that I'm getting to all of them. So that's what's happening here. 
Number three, this one's another little concrete thing that you can do right now before you start med school, and that is to explore how you plan to take notes. That seems like the most boring tip anyone could suggest, like saying that out loud sounded really boring, but I do think it's a really easy way to kind of alleviate a little bit of stress right when you show up for your first day. In college, I loved handwritten notes. I still love handwritten notes, but I think in med school, just things are different. Things are different in med school, so I would highly recommend using a digital note-taking platform. That being said, people do what they want. There are a few of my classmates who still use handwritten notes, but in my experience, I've really loved being able to open my notes on my phone whenever I needed them. I would explore not only digital note-taking options, but options that allow you to sync across devices should you have multiple devices that you might be able to access your notes from. When I started medical school, one of the first things I did was take out loans to buy my computer and my iPad. So I understand that that might not be in the cards for everyone, but if it is, if digital note-taking is an option for you, if there is a way for you to take notes and then have them sync to your phone so that you can access them anywhere. I think that's totally worth doing and it might be helpful to start looking at those options now so that when you show up for your first day, you can just start taking your notes and move on with your life. If that's not an option, don't even trip. You are going to be fine either way. I just wanted to put that option out there. My next tip for getting ready for your first year of medical school would be to not buy almost nothing. What? That's not even proper grammar. I don't think it's worth buying any textbooks before you actually start any of your classes. I made the mistake of buying a few, not even all, thank God, a few of the textbooks that were recommended via our required textbook reading list, and I never cracked open a single one, not once. However, there were a couple of resources that I thought were super helpful and that you can buy flat out before starting your first year of medical school. I'm going to link all of the resources that I think are worth buying down below. So one of the first ones I would say is like your first aid, USMLE, that little book thing. The book thing that every med student everywhere has. There are lots of videos about first aid on YouTube that you can look up. And I just think that first aid has a lot of information formatted in a super condensed way so that you can't really learn from first aid, but you can use it as a reference. And so I think first aid is worth having right from the beginning. A second thing that I think is worth having is some sort of anatomy atlas. Now, I actually got Netter's anatomy and I did use it sometimes. I didn't use it all the time. What I did use all the time, especially during anatomy, and still now, actually, is the Complete Anatomy app. It is kind of expensive, and I forget, I think there's a discount for when you sign up in the beginning. So I would wait on buying the Complete Anatomy app until you started school, because sometimes your university might offer you like a group discount on that app. And then the last thing I actually had that I wish I would have used more, but I do think is a helpful sort of resource for anatomy again, is I had the Netter's Anatomy flashcards. These flashcards allow you to test yourself and review material at the same time, and they're in a like more digestible form than a giant atlas. Everything else, I would really wait until you started school, because even though the textbooks say required, they're not required, there might be digital copies floating around amongst your classmates, and so overall, no matter what school you go to, I would not buy a single textbook until you show up. You just don't. My next point, number five, something you can do right now is try to get in touch with second year students at your institution. Second year students were just M1s, so they're gonna be the most helpful. They remember what it's like to start medical school and they'll have the most up-to-date information on what courses and what certain blocks look like at your school. I think second year medical students could be your most valuable resource. If I were you, I would just hit them up and say, hey, I was wondering about this textbook. Should we get it? They're going to tell you no. I already told you that. You can also let them know like, hey, I'm really interested in this field and I'm wondering if you ever like talked to someone in that department. Or do you know like who might be a good mentor for first gen students? Right. There are tons of questions that you can can just ask second year med students and then they're most likely to have the most up-to-date information and the most willing to help because they have the most time at the moment or they might have the most time at the moment. That's anything from studying for courses or, or textbooks to how to make wellness appointments, how to navigate mental health services, what student orgs to join, how to seek out mentorship. Like there's tons of things that you can ask your second year med students and they'll give you the most appropriate answer for your institution. Number six, before starting med school, something you can do is just look into Anki. If you haven't come across Anki, yet. I hadn't really done a ton of like med school Anki redditing, but Anki is a space repetition flashcard application that many med students use to retain information over the long run. Now, the reason I'm saying look into Anki is because I think it's really helpful for you to decide for yourself if that's an app that you're thinking about exploring before you fall into the rabbit hole of doing what your classmates are doing. Anki can be a really helpful app, especially for reviewing old material as you continue to learn new material. 
material. But it is an app that requires a level of commitment that you have to kind of be ready to make from the jump. And so as an example, I used Anki kind of intermittently whenever I felt like it at various points during first year, but I never fully committed. And I think it was a really difficult way to use Anki because you're supposed to do your Anki every single day. If Anki is at all interesting to you, then I think it would be helpful to just look up Anki and see what it is now because I still remember feeling super overwhelmed during the opening days when everyone was like talking about the Anki decks and doing their Anki things and holding Anki webinars and getting all Anki, Anki, Anki. And I was so freaked out. So if I were you, I would just look into Anki now, see if it's a flashcard app you'd be interested in using. Just have it on your radar because once med school starts, I think a lot of med students do use it or do talk about it. I think the process of that being your first exposure to Anki is the most stressful thing. So if you have some time, Time, go ahead and look up Anki. After that, don't worry about it. Number seven, my next little tidbit, something you can do right now is to commit yourself to learning the material. Now, I know that doesn't seem like a very helpful tip. But I wanted to include it here because I think there are a couple of really important things for you to know about med school. Med school is not like college. You remember in college where you could like take one class and then wipe your brain clean of it and then move on? That is not the approach you want to take with med school. It is super important for you to actually learn the foundational key concepts the first time around so that you can continue to build on your knowledge when you come across it again and again throughout your medical school education. Pay attention to what I said though. It's all about setting a solid foundation. So how I would approach med school is that you really want to learn as much as you can at each point. That's not to say to stress yourself out and make sure you learn every single thing and make sure you remember the genes and remember this whatever blah 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 blah. But once you learn about congestive heart failure, you probably don't want to forget what the heck congestive heart failure is. Maybe you'll forget a name of a drug, but the key things about congestive heart failure you don't want to have to relearn. Does that make sense? So I would say that one of the things that you can do right now in terms of mindset is remember that when you're studying for med school, school, you really do want to study in a way that allows you to grasp the core concepts and moreover allows you to retain that information. Don't worry about forgetting the details, although you should learn the details for your exams and you should learn as many things as you possibly can, right? Like that is the point of going to med school. You're in med school. Ah, so exciting. But there are just certain things that you don't want to have to keep trying to build. As you're learning an organ system, learn the key concepts. Make sure you don't forget those so that later when you come back to that organ system, you can build on the foundation you've already set instead of having to start from the foundation again. There's nothing that you can study right now that will prepare you for your first year or get you a leg up on your first year. I really don't think that that's the case. If I were you, I would not do any studying. I would just relax. But I do want you to take a second to sort of switch into that mindset because it's something that I kind of failed to do. Just commit to yourself right now. Commit to learning the material. Commit to mastering the key concepts. I think that's good advice. If you're a med student and have any input on this, I would love it if you left it in the comment down below. Remember that some forgetting is natural. So, you know, you might not remember all of the genes or all the specific mutations that account for a certain disease presentation, but there are just certain things that you want to make sure you don't forget, especially considering your patient population. When I learned about asthma for Palm, I committed to myself, I cannot forget what asthma looks like. I cannot forget how to treat asthma because so many of the patients we treat in our community have asthma. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Make your foundation as strong as possible so that as you continue to move through your medical school education, you can continue to build and review all the details that didn't stick the first time. But the foundation is super important and try to carry your foundation with you forward. I know that I've already given you guys a couple of concrete things that you can write down and do and think about to prepare for your first year of med school. But the last thing I want to share with you is that I want you to reflect on how incredible it is that you're going to be a doctor one day. This might be the first gen Latina in me. It is so awesome that you've positioned yourself to take this next step towards the career of your dreams. When I started medical school, I remember feeling super, super excited. And then there was definitely like a period of a few months where I feel like I lost sight of how awesome it was that I was here. And I hope that doesn't come off as I don't know. I hope that doesn't come off the wrong way, but I do think that it's sort of natural for us to forget how awesome it is to be in the place that we've worked for when we're super stressed out by that same place. And so if there's anything that you should be doing right now to prepare for medical school, it's 
just getting yourself in the right mindset, in the right headspace to take this next big step to becoming a doctor. It is such an honor and a privilege to be learning to care for others. It is incredible how much we know about the human body and it's even more incredible how much we don't know. Prepare yourself to be humbled, but never, ever, ever forget your why. If there's one thing I really want you to do of all of the tips or all the things I've asked you to do so far is just get super, super clear on your why and pat yourself on the back for making it this far and get really excited to learn all of the really cool crap you're about to learn. And I guess just so that you have it all in one place in case you forgot, cause you know I'm a Puerto Rican, we talk a lot. I thought it would be helpful to list one more time the eight things I've asked you guys to do. Humble yourself. You're a first year medical student. In many ways, back at the bottom of the totem pole, you are important, but remember how much time and investment is going into your education. And so for that, we should just be super grateful. Yes to the school, yes to the physicians, but also to the patients that are allowing us to learn. Just be humble. Write down a few things that are important to you you, a few specialties that you're interested in, and a plan for what you're gonna do when you need help. Explore your note-taking options. Do not buy a single textbook, but if you wanna buy something, there are two resources I found really helpful. I'll link both of those in the info box down below. Get in touch with your second years at your institution. Look into Anki. Commit yourself to learning the material. Reflect and remember how incredible it is that you're going to be a doctor one day. I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would love it if you left a comment down below offering your own med school advice if you're a fellow medical student. If you want to know what it's like to go to medical school, I have a day in the life online medical school vlog that you can watch. And I also have two Q and A's. I love you guys so much. I am rooting for you. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. You got this.